Hi everyone, as you might already know by now, TCS code beta dates have just been announced. You can see the dates on the screen. You can even check on the official website. So you don't have a lot of time till the pre-qualifier round, but it is still enough time for you to master coding and be able to crack the best role in TCS, which is TCS Prime, which like I've discussed in my previous videos, pays 9 LPA for undergrad and 11.5 LPA for postgrad. So in this video, I'm going to tell you end to end how you need to master coding so that you can crack TCS code beta with ease. And the way I'm going to tell you this, it is not just for TCS code beta. It is going to help you in TCS code beta definitely, but it will also help you in other places. So the way I tell you to learn coding, do it like that. And it is going to help you not only in TCS code beta, but other OAs as well for other companies coding round online assessment as well. So this is going to be an end to end solution for you to crack coding rounds of pretty much any place. So now let's get into it. So the first thing that you need to do, like I've discussed in my previous videos as well, you need a good programming language. So I won't go too much into details because I've mentioned that in my other videos, but to be very brief, what I will suggest is to C++ or Java. Okay. Why? Because they're very good languages for problem solving and they have very powerful libraries. Okay. That is the next part. Learn the library of the programming language that you've chosen. I cannot stress this enough. In DSA, you're going to be using pretty much the library everywhere. So for C++, you have STL. For STL, you have Strivers video in which he has explained everything in STL. For collections, you have Riddhidatta's videos in which he has explained everything in collections. And the link to both of these videos will be in the descriptions. So all the topics, the resources, everything will be in the description box. You don't need to worry about that. So learn the programming language, learn the library. After you do that, now it's time to jump deep into DSA. So what we're going to do, we're going to go topic by topic. Now I've divided the topics into three parts. One, you have the basics, then you have the standard, then you have the advanced. Let's start with basics. So basics, you have arrays and strings, and then you have algorithms related to that. So what you need to do is you need to go straight to problem solving because in arrays and strings, you don't have much theory, right? So what you can do, go to the lead code 150 interview questions in there, you have a section for arrays and strings, start solving problems. Start with the easy problems, solve them, then move to the medium problems. Right now, you don't need to do hard problems, like because you won't find much hard problems in TCS code beta. You can do that if you have extra time, but if you're in a crunch of time, you can suffice with easy medium. And pretty much majority of the companies, 99% of companies, you can crack if you're able to solve lead code medium level of difficulty, okay? so. Start with easy, move to medium. If you have time, move to hard. Solve problems from arrays and strings in the lead code 150. Now, what if you're not able to solve a problem? We've already discussed that in other videos as well. You might know if you see my videos, you need to move to the discuss section of lead code. From there, try to find approaches, then code it yourself, understand the approach, and you're good to go. Now, after you're done solving arrays and string problems, you need to learn two very important algorithms, which are very important for arrays and strings. These two algorithms are two pointers and sliding windows. So two pointers are going to help you a lot in difficult array questions. Likewise, sliding windows will help you a lot in solving string questions. So there is a little bit of theory involved, both in two pointers and sliding windows. So I have made videos on both of them. I'll give link to my videos from there. You can understand. I'll give a few resources as well. So first understand the concept. Why do we use two pointers? How does it work? Why do we use sliding windows? How does it work? Understand the concept then move to solving problems. So again, in top 150, you'll have a section for sliding windows. You'll have a section for uh, two pointers, solve questions from there. Again, the same drill, easy, medium, then hard if you have time. Okay. Solve as many problems as you can, but focus the most on medium problems because these medium problems are the ones that you will be facing in your OAs in TCS code beta and pretty much in any coding round. Okay. Solve easy as well. But what I believe is easy problems are for your confidence, medium problems are for your learning and hard problems are for your challenge. Okay. So do this now, after you're done with two pointers and sliding windows, now it's time for you to move into searching and sorting algorithms, searching and sorting again, very important for arrays. So sorting algorithms, you can learn, you already know how to sort if you've learned the library, but you need to know the algorithm behind it because a lot of times in code beta, or anywhere else, you'll get a question which is a modification of a sorting algorithm. So if you don't know the exact sorting algorithm, you'll not be able to solve it. So learn the sorting algorithms along with the time complexities so that you know it helps you better understand it. 
then learn binary search how do you use binary search okay and again solve problems on sorting and on binary search now this is pretty much what covers basics okay if you do all of this then pretty much you're good to go because at least two to three problems in your tcs code beta will be related to arrays and strings now there is one more part for the basics which is mathematics and bitwise operations now by mathematics i don't mean anything complex like college level maths or phd level maths but you need to know basic number theory you need to know how to calculate lcm gcd in optimized way how to calculate power in optimized way apart from that you need to know bitwise operations like how do you use bitwise operations so i'll give you a set of questions on maths and bitwise operations in the description box so all the topics and the resources will be in the description box again so you can check it out from there so go to the description and solve problems on mathematics and bitwise operations so that you don't miss out on this generally when people do dsa they skip out on maths and bitwise and because of that they face sometimes issues in you know interview coding round or you might face issue in code beta because you can get a question on this definitely so don't skip out on this so your basics basically basics of dsa covered your arrays strings their respective algorithms like searching sorting two pointer sliding windows along with maths and bitwise once you do all of this like solving problems on lead code solving problems that i've given in the description once you do all of this you'll be very good with the basics and once you're very good with the basics half of your work is already done okay now we need to move to the standard level now standard level you have data structures like stack queue hash map linked list so for these you have a little bit of theory so you need to know theory well because if you don't know theory you'll have issues in solving the problems so and you might have learned them in collections or stl but i mean truly understand them like how it's working behind the scenes okay so for learning the theory i'll mention a few channels like abdul bari jenny lectures uh, tushar roy coding there are some great channels who have made theory about dsa right so understand theory well no need to focus on it no need to focus too deep into it understand it well after that go straight to solving problems for solving problems you can pick striver sheet striver has an amazing sheet for dsa from striver sheet solve problems solve linked list problems solve stack problems solve hash map problems solve hashing problems solve queue problems solve all of these problems again the topics will be in the description solve as many problems as you can again the same deal move from easy go to medium go to hard if you get stuck you can see striver's videos because he has made videos on the same topic and his way of explanation is also pretty good so you can definitely refer to him so for standard no need to do much you can just understand the theory the concepts and move to striver sheet if you don't want to go along with the sheet you can just go to lead code and solving start solving problems according to the tag okay now standard is still easy it is nothing difficult and now we move to the advanced level so the advanced level we have what i like to call the big 3 so the big 3 are tree graph and dynamic programming now why do i call them the big 3 because these are the three topics which according to my experience students have the most trouble in okay especially i had a lot of trouble in it when i was learning dsa initially so what do you need to do let's start with trees so for trees make sure that you understand the theories and concepts really well and before you learn trees you should be good with recursion because you will be using recursion a lot in trees for recursion there is no theory go straight to solving problems and then you'll be good with recursion after that you get deep into tree first start with the theory because trees have a lot of theory you have you know multiple parts of tree you have diameter of tree you have different types of tree you have different traverses so be good with the theory of tree you know how do the traverses work how do you calculate the height how do you calculate the diameter what does it mean what a tree exactly is you know learn those things conceptually after you do that now it's time to move to the problems for again for advanced topics you can also take help from striver sheet but initially i'll suggest not to go with striver sheet and go on lead code and solve all the easy problems try to do as many easy problems as you can because it will give a boost to your confidence if you go straight to medium or hard problem you might be demotivated so start off with the easy problems do as many as you can once you feel confident then move to the medium and then you can even move to striver sheet directly but start off with solving as many easy problems as you can it will be very good for your confidence now once you solve enough easy problems then you solve enough medium problems and you solve few hard problems as well if you have time now it's time to move to graphs 
Now, graph light tree has some good theory as well because you have like graph algorithms, you have representation of graph in code, how do you store a graph, you have things like this. So you need to know them before you go into problem solving, right? If you don't know the basics, you'll not be able to solve problems. So this is what you need to do. For the theory, again, you can pick Abdul Bari's channel, you can pick Jenny's channel, I'll give a few more in the description, whatever you like, understand the theoretical concepts. What does DFS mean? Why is it used? What does BFS mean? Why is it used? No. After you learn that theoretically, it's time to move to code. So again, go on lead code, or you can go on Geeks Over Geeks and try to solve the easiest of problems, you know, the easiest of them, just to be comfortable with it, just to get confidence in it. Once you're done with the easy problems, move to the medium problems, okay? Again, solve medium problems, you can solve from driver sheet, or you can just solve by tag on lead code, okay? You can solve hard problems as well, but you will not get hard problem that much in DCS code beta. Now, after that, now it's time to come to dynamic programming. Dynamic programming, according to me, my personal opinion, is the most difficult DSA topic. You might think something else, people may say something else, but according to me, at least, dynamic programming, DP, is the most difficult of DSA. And I had a lot of issues in it initially when I was learning DSA. So what I will suggest to you is that I have made a sheet of 50 DP questions, which will explain to you how DP works step by step. So I have collected 50 questions for dynamic programming, which you can solve. So there are 50 questions in that sheet of dynamic programming. It starts off with the basics of DP. It starts off with 1D DP with something as easy as Fibonacci sequence. Then it moves on to 2D DP. It explains with some standard problems, and then you move to the advanced topics. So I highly suggest that you take the sheet and you solve DP problems from that sheet. Now for DP, there's no theory as such, but if you want, I'll give a few links which explain the need for dynamic programming. But there is no theory as such compared to graph or trace. DP, it's all about solving problems. And luckily, you may not see TCS code beta have a lot of DP problems, at least on hard level. You may get standard or easy DP problem, but nothing too difficult. Okay? So, for DP, you just solve problems from the sheet. You don't need to solve all 50. You just need to solve a few so that you understand and at least solve the standard problems like knapsack problem, coin exchange problem, subset some problem. These problems you should definitely do on DP. Okay, so this is what you need to do for the advanced topics. So once you do the advanced topics, now it's pretty much game over. Now you have finished DSA completely. If you take a look at the description, there also I've explained everything in a similar way, moving from basics, then standard, then advanced. Okay, so. Do it like this, focus on what I said, solve enough problems, and you're good to go. Everything is done. Now what do you need to do? Can you sit back and relax and wait for TCS code beta? No. I suggest now what you do, if you haven't already, solve previous year questions. Once you do that, start giving contests. Now, you can give contests on lead code, that is fine. And if you are comfortable, I'll also suggest start giving contests on code forces because CodeForces is a great website for computer programming and CodeVita is more or less a computer programming contest only, right, if you look at it. So solve some problems on CodeForces as well. For Div2, try to solve till A, B, C or for Div3, try to solve till D. And if you're not able to solve, again, same thing, upsolve there and, you know, take a look at the editorial, try to take some hint and solve it yourself. Likewise, go on lead code, start giving contests. So, Practice by the topics that I mentioned, then practice the previous equations, then practice the contest. Once you do all of this, then code beta is going to be a piece of cake for you. And you're also going to be able to easily crack other companies coding round away as well. So that's pretty much it. I think the video has been longer than what I wanted it to be. So I'm going to be ending it at this point. If you have any doubts about code beta, you want to know more, then feel free to leave a comment. I'll be sure to get back to you. And as always, everything will be in the description box. Don't forget to check it out. That's all. Thank you.